Hey, this is Zaf Levavi from LuckyNorth.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video we're going to learn a finger style arrangement I've made especially for you guys and girls of the beautiful song Love Me Tender as sung by Elvis Presley and dozens of others. First, I'm going to play it for you so you can see and hear how my arrangement goes and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen as usual. So first, it goes like this. Enjoy. Alright, so that's what it sounds like. I hope you liked it. Now let's learn this. Let's dissect it and learn it note by note. As you've seen, the melody resides within the chords. What we're playing here is basically just uh, dissecting chords and playing around with chords. So you begin and end on D. Both the verse and the chorus begin and end on D. So put on the D chord uh, in order to begin. Now, the first line is this. Okay? So you can play it in two different ways. Put on the D chord, take your second finger off. Now, you can play it like this. Okay? Exchanging your second and third fingers on the B string. I'm gonna tell you what to play in a second but you can prepare your second finger in advance and put it on the second fret of the B string, okay? The second fret of the second string, so you have both your second and third fingers on the second string, on three and two. And that way, all you have to do is lift and put your third finger back on the B string instead of playing around with both fingers, you're just playing around with one finger. Okay, so you choose how you want to play it, what's more comfortable for you, both sound the same, okay, or, okay, whichever is more comfortable for you. So, put on the D chord, uh, take the second finger off of the E string, put it on the B string if you want, or just get ready to put it on the B string and play this, okay? Just a D5 arpeggio, the D string, G string, and B string on 0, 2, and 3, respectively. It's just breaking down a D5 chord. Um, and then 2 and 3 on the B string. Okay, so it's. Okay? Or if you already put it on, it's this. Okay? That's it. That's the first line. Pretty simple, right? The next line is even simpler. Put on an E7 chord, which is E uh, with an open D string. Okay? And your melody is this. Okay? The E string, B string, and the E string. 
Okay? Second and uh, first and second strength. First strength, second strength, first strength. That's our melody. So there are several ways we can play it. We can first we have to play the chord. Okay? And the melody note is on top of it. And then you can play second string and first string. But if you want to outline the seventh chord, play the chord and then play the open D string and then play the second and first string. Okay, so it sounds like this. And then the listener knows that it's a seventh chord. You got it? E, seven, D string, second string, first string. Okay? So, what we've got so far is this D, E7. Now put on an A7 chord and you do this. You play the bass and then you can do this. Or you can just play the chord. You can do this. Or you can arpeggiate it. Okay? The melody, again, is very simple. It's just... It's 3, 2, 0, 2 on the second string, on the B string. The rest is up to you. As long as you play the bass and then the melody... You've done your part. Now, creativity uh, kicks in in the way you play the chord. Again, you can play it in dozens of different ways. Okay, you can choose how you want to play it. Okay, um, so... That's basically it with the A7 chord. Okay? And then D again. And you play a D5. You don't even have to play the E string. The melody note is D. But it will sound really, really poor if you just play two D notes. Okay? Because there's no harmony there, it's just an octave. If you play both second and fourth strings, it's just D. There's no chord. So play the G string along with it. Okay? And then you have enough room to play around with the chord and outline the fact that it's a D chord. What do I mean? I mean this. Melody. And then you have enough space to play around with the chord itself. Okay? So again, by the way, we're done. We're done with the verse. This repeats itself twice. And uh, I said twice with two hands, so I... <laughs> that's four. Math. I'm not a mathematician. I'm a guitar player. I'm a musician. All I know to do is how to count. So, twice. Okay? Again, D. E7. A7 D Twice All of this is played twice Let me show you several ways you can play this different variations okay just play what you want to play play what you hear and try to come up with your own version again you don't have to play the notes along with the bass notes you don't have to play um, the entire chord or you can play the entire chord okay it's up to you so uh, the verse without talking, just so you can see one final time how it goes before we move on to the chorus. I 
keep playing the, the high D note on the E7, but that's what my fingers want to play, so I let them. Um, by the way, uh, I came up with something interesting I think I should teach you. Um, I think I did this. Okay, instead of on the A7, I hammered on the 3. Okay, that's just a nice embellishment, I thought I should show it to you. Okay, just a nice finger style embellishment. Um, you can also use it on the D, by the way. Okay, you can make a motif out of it. Two, three on the D. The possibilities are nearly endless. Now for the chorus. Okay, the chorus has way more chords than the verse. Um, uh, it's mostly half bars. There's half a bar of D, then half a bar of F sharp seven, then half a bar of B minor. It's mostly half bars. The verse was made out of um, whole bars. You, you, you play the D for an entire bar and then E7 for an entire bar. Now you don't have that much time to play each chord. Um, so you're gonna play with it in different ways. I'm gonna show you. You begin with D. Okay? Love me tender. Okay? But um, in the middle of the line, it changes into F sharp seven, so it's okay. That's the that's the 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 greatness of this harmony. So again, there are several ways of playing it. You can play just stop the melody and move to uh, F sharp seven and then play it or put on the the bar and then play play the note again the F sharp note two on the E string then play the bass then play the chord okay there are many ways to play this or you can just play the melody okay and accompany it with bass notes that's also an option This is, well, I, I don't like it, but it's also an option. And then this, which is B minor, bar the seventh fret, and play strings two, three, and six, okay, the E bass and the G and B strings. Hammer on um, the eighth fret on the second string okay and then take it off again and play seven on the B string again so it's okay that's how I saw fit to play it you can begin with the eighth fret okay and take it off that's the melody but I like the hammer on Okay, because then you begin with a B minor chord, add the melody note, then continue with the chord, which is the melody. Okay, and then D7. Okay, just a simple D7 chord. Again, you can play, you can play around with it as long as you keep the F sharp, the melody note. So that's basically an exercise in F sharps because you play D and the melody is F sharp, then F sharp seven and the melody is F sharp. By the way, again, as you did with the E7, you can outline the seven by playing the D string, which is on two, is the bar. So you can, okay, you can play the, the first melody note with the bass, the second melody note with the seven and then you have 
the seven the seventh chord outline. The simpler the melody is, that's a rule. The the simpler the melody is, the more ways you have to play around with it. And then it's this. Okay, it's again. It's it's G and F sharp. It's and then another F sharp this time on D7. So you have the same melody note harmonized four times. D, F sharp 7, B minor, and D7. Okay, so I think you can see for yourself how many possibilities you have to play these chords. Okay, you can just play the bass notes, you can play one more harmony note, you can play the entire chord all the time, you can arpeggiate the chord, it's endless. So for the last time before we move on, okay, and then you have a bit of space to play the D7, okay. Play around with it, then put on either the first or second fingers on the G bass, three on the E bass, okay? Because you're gonna need two more fingers in a second. Play a G6 chord, which is just the G bass with the open first, second, and third strings, okay? And then you turn this into G minor. 6. Okay? It's a G minor 6 if the E string keeps ringing. It's a G minor if you just play the 2nd, 3rd, and 6th uh, uh, strings on the 3rd fret. You add 2 fingers on 3 and 3 on the 2nd and 3rd strings, making this G minor. So it was G major at first. The melody note is the open E string. Then it's a G minor and then the E note is again the melody so it's the E string that's why we keep it open because um, that's finger style you don't always need to put on the entire chord you just choose the notes you want to play so it's okay why don't we put those fingers on from the top because it's not the harmony. The harmony is G and then G minor. It's okay. It's G then G minor. So we're using the open G position and we're manipulating that. So again, G six, just the bass and the open. First, second, and third strings. Um, and it's not played like this, by the way. You you play the bass first, and then the melody comes around. Okay, so it's open E string. Harmonize the the um, G minor chord, and then open E string again, and then D. The melody note again is F sharp. It's two on the E string, so it's it's just a D chord. Um, and then you have a bit of space to play around with it, so it can sound like this. And then you're staying on D, and the melody note again is F sharp. And this time it's harmonized with B7, so it's... Okay, it's D, B7. Okay? And again, you can choose how to harmonize it. You can play the entire chord, you can play just the bass note. You can play one or two notes. Okay, this time I harmonized with the G string alone. Okay, which is nice. You can play the entire chord. You can strum it. Okay, 
if you want, it's your arrangement, play it however you want. And then this. Okay? It's, again, it's E7 again. But uh, I've made a decision to play like this. And just outline the 7 at the end of the melody. That's just my way of playing it. You can play it like this. Okay, but I think it's too dirty. I think it's, it's a bit cluttered. So that's why I like this better. That's why I prefer it. It's 3, 2, 0 on the, uh, the E string with the E bass at the beginning and I harmonize all the way with the open B string. And then I put on the rest of the 7th chord. I put on 3 on the B string, 1 on the G string and I pull off, I play them both and I pull off from 3 to 0 on the B string. Okay? So that's how I get the effect that I'm playing more strings than are available to me. Okay? Okay, it gives you the feeling of playing uh, four or five strings when you're just playing two strings. Okay? Um, that's a small trick um, to just play around with the chord inside the chord. And then A7 exactly the same as you played it before 3, 2, 0, 2 on the B string and that's the melody play the bass first okay, again you can hammer it on again you can harmonize with the entire chord and then the same D5 you ended the verse with um, D and you play strings two, three, and five, um, and five, two, three, and four. Okay, and you're done. So let's go over the chorus again. Okay, there were many, many, many F sharps we played here. So it's D, F sharp seven. Remember, you can play the D string as your second bass note with your thumb. Then B minor on 7, hammer on 8 on the B string as your melody. Then take it off. So you're playing 7, hammer on to 8, 7. Then D7. G6. G minor. Which this is technically G minor 6 but the E string is our melody, so it's just technically a G minor 6. You're playing G minor and the melody is the E, um, is the E note, so it's D. Again, F sharp is our melody note. You have a whole bar to fill, and then D again. B7. E7, but as I showed you, uh, I'm outlining the chord, ending the 7th at the end, then A7, D, and that's it. Now, again, you can add more notes. Let me play it for you from the top. Pay attention, I'm going to try and variate, I'm going to try and uh, fill the space in different ways, okay? I'm going to play one note, two notes, the whole chord, way too many notes. I just want to give you a sense of what you can do with it, okay? So the verse, E7, notes. 
Now I just outline the chord. Chorus. just added a lot of bass notes between the notes. Um, I, I added a lot of bass notes. I added um, notes inside of the A chord. Okay, that's just what came naturally. Um, again, um, you can you can use your thumb to play different notes inside the chord while you're playing. Um, and you can harmonize again. Let's take the B7 for example. You can do this. Okay, and just play the rest of the chord after you play the melody. You still have half a bar in front of you. Use the space or don't. You can just play this. Okay, let me show you why this also sounds good. contrast to playing a lot of notes in the the full D bar. Remember there's a G6, then G minor 6, then D, a whole bar of D you can fill in. So if you fill that in, the next bar should be minimalistic. Just play around with it. Highs and lows. And you're done. I'm gonna stop um, giving you too many ideas to toy around with and let you find your own voice. But before you go, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There are a ton of lessons already on the lesson uh, on the channel and I always make new ones. I try to make room uh, and time to make new arrangements and lessons. Everything is for free, of course, including the tabs. Go to the website, download the tab. It's for free, but if you want to give something back to Lick and Riff, you can donate. There's a donation button. I'd appreciate any donation whatsoever. It all goes back to Lick and Riff to uh, making these arrangements, making these lessons, making time to shoot and edit and upload the lessons. Uh, you go and have fun with this. Get it under your fingers. Uh, this is a really beautiful tune. You can, you can do wonders with this. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Leave a comment if you did, if you have, if you had, if you has, if you didn't. <sighs> I'm gonna let you go now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.